I don't know if you can see this, but there are literally thousands. This is all worms. Let me see, let me see if I can get you a little closer. Can you see that? What a lovely way to start a video. Actually, I was not going to do a video. I'm actually working on here and I lifted this and look at this. Keep in mind, I didn't put any in here. I do grab some native soil and I try to grab it from under someplace wet, like a rock, a flower pot, and that was all. And look, can you see that? Okay, now I don't wanna, I don't wanna take that out just in case. Well, I'm gonna add in some more stuff and I'll show you what this is. Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California and I wasn't going to do anything. I was just going to do some work in the garden. And let me put this back so you can see what I'm doing. This is that two system where I grew the watermelon. Let's get that up. Ooh, let's back up. And that is two buckets. Now keep in mind, I don't know if I always say it because I get questions. Both buckets have holes. Keep that in mind. Everything has holes. That has holes up the tote so it retains a little bit of water. And then these buckets have holes on the bottom. You can put some holes on the side because no matter what on the yellow bucket, you want this to drain. So you want to put some holes on the side, on the bottom and the bottom. This you want to drain. And then the green one, you want to have a lot of holes as well. The earthworms can travel up into the yellow bucket. If they get too damp, too wet or uncomfortable, they can travel up. See, they can go all the way up and then when they're ready, they can travel down. So holes, 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 I've got a video on that. So what we have done is we harvested our first watermelon and I just removed that contraption I made, you know, the two chairs with the ladder. So that's done. I'm not even gonna wait and see if it's gonna grow anymore because we're into fall now and our nights are getting cool. We're having kind of a heat wave right now, but that's not gonna last. Then I've got three more melons there, but this one's a Korean melon. That's not a watermelon. That's a watermelon. That's a watermelon. There's another watermelon there. Oh, the other one was incredibly sweet and they are ready to come off. See the tendrils are pretty brown. Once the tendril right next to it, here, I think you can see really good here. Let me see where the camera is. All right. Now, let me see if I can get you down. Oh, you're going down into the plants. See the tendril, the closest one right there, the closest one to the watermelon is what you're waiting for. When this turns brown, see how brown that is? Well, that means that the fruit is no longer being fed by the mother plant. That's basically what it means. Nothing more and nothing less. Now it will hang there until either mother nature dries it up and it falls to the ground, which of course we're not gonna let do, or until we cut it. So it can be cut any time. Now here's the thing, when you cut fruit and bring it in the house and sit it on your counter, it's different in the house and you've noticed that fruit will start to immediately compost, decompose. It doesn't last that long, but when you have fruit outside, as long as nothing gets to it, you know, no rodents or birds, it can last for weeks and weeks outside. I personally leave them until we're ready to eat it, unless something comes up and I feel I have to remove it. I also like leaving it just in case, because see, I know it's not feeding off the mother plant anymore, but it's still green. So I know that the fruit is still getting something from the mother plant, so I leave it. So I tend to leave my watermelon for about a week once I notice it's completely dry. You don't have to, a lot of people pick them, but then I've seen videos, they pick them, they sit down, they cut them, and you can clearly see they're not ripe. They're not quite there. They're not sweet enough. It hasn't started to turn into sugar. So I have found for me, just for me, if I leave it one week, they're about, give or take, you can even go over two weeks, it will turn really red inside as well as the, the fruit inside will now be more sugar. And that's what I want, you want it sweet. Don't leave it too long. If you left it for a month, it may start to dry. If it's not getting any moisture, any nutrients or anything from the mother plant, then eventually it will start to dry. As long as it's on the plant and it's still green, the stem itself, as you can see here, I have found that it is still getting some sort of water. See, it's still getting some sort of water from the plant. Whoops. But 
it's not being fed anymore. It's not going to really get any bigger or anything once that turns brown. So if it's small, it's small. And if it's good size, it's good size. Don't throw away or compost anything that's really tiny. Because we had one that was so tiny. And it was, I think it came off of, yeah, it came off over there because the, can I zoom in? The tomatoes took over, so they didn't get as much nutrients so it stayed tiny and i took it in and i thought well what the heck it was smaller than the korean melon i cut it in half and it was the first thing i did that's why i ran to do a video real quick after i cut it oh look there's a ladybug on top can you see the ladybug i'm excited to see the ladybug look at the ladybug um um i was excited that it was sweet because it was so tiny and i was so glad i didn't throw it away and i kind of diverse so i not sure what I was talking about, but that was basically it. So try it. You have nothing to lose. If it's no good, you compost it. If it's good, you don't compost it. I threw a piece in there that was just a little watermelon that was already decomposing, and now it's in the bucket, and the worms will enjoy it. So that's it. I came out. Like I said, I'm having coffee and kind of looking around on what I'm going to do here. I'm going to leave the Korean melon because they they're different they don't grow until the very end of summer so we'll see what happens with this this is almost ripe i'll have to keep an eye on that because i had some last year i was so excited and i did not tool it and i figured i'll wait until it gets really ripe where you can smell it well so did something else and they ran off with it so that one's getting really close and there might be a couple more hidden in here see here's one that's a Korean melon, so I've got a Korean melon down there. So it's kind of, this one's winding around, and who knows what else I'll find in there. This is really cool. This is my pepino. I've showed this on the garden tours. And th what, I, what I really like about this, I'm a lazy gardener. No, everything's got to be easy. I don't have to do anything. Come next spring, I can step back and say, this is done. <laughs> this will grow for many years. This is like in the nightshade family, but it looks completely different. And it grows those wonderful little fruits. You can take them off when they're bigger than this. They turn white and you use them in stir fries or soups or vegetables or whatever you want. Or you leave them and they build up sugar and they turn yellowish and then they taste like a melon. And then, of course, this is my plant that I planted early this year. It came out of the pot where the cobra grows on the driveway. And look, there's a green one. Oh, that's an interesting. Oh, I thought there was something. This is being held by the, see that? Let me see. Oh, you can't see it. There it is. That is the tendril from the Korean melon holding on to that chili. It's going, that chili belongs to me. Isn't that funny? So these are black cobras. And it was a little plant when I moved it over here. And that is layered. That's in a pot. I like doing peppers that way. See, that's the pot. I was going to move it, but of course I'm not. It probably set some of its roots into the tote. So I'm definitely going to leave it. So that was a gift from nature because it fell off the plant. The original plant started to grow and I moved it here. So I've got a beautiful black cobra. You can eat them at any stage, depending on what you're doing. You can eat them green. You can eat them black. And black is not ripe. And when they're red, that's when they're ripe when they're that red and that's it so now I think I'm gonna this is let's call this a morning vlog I'm gonna go trim a little bit more I'll probably trim back my broccoli I should trim that all back and whatever's good doesn't have a lot of aphids on it I can just put it on a frying pan with a little butter and then Kitty likes it cooked as well Kitty loves her vegetables it's so funny and then I can start to analyze what I want to do here this tomato plant needs a good grooming. Oh, there's a mockingbird. You better not eat. Oh, he took off my pomegranates because they'll look for them when they're splitting and then they'll eat them or they'll eat the papayas too a little bit. I think they're looking for insects. This is done really well. I'm just going to groom it and see what happens. It, it wasn't really supposed to be for tomatoes, but you know what? If it's growing good, it's growing good. This is another system. This is just like the bucket, but it's tiny. I don't know what's in here. Oh my goodness. More worms. Let me sit this down for a second. And when you got worms feeding in here, look at that. I didn't I haven't looked in here for a while. When you got worms feeding in there, what you do, I see you just go through and you go, ah, this you don't want this leaf, you don't want this leaf. This then you go through. 
And you know how we chop and drop? Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to put that in there. And then we're going to put the container. See the holes? This one's got holes on the bottom and around the sides. And we just put it back together. Now, I don't know what's underneath it. We can lift it. Oh, more worms. So this, that's, this has just got some walking onions that I just stuck in there the other day. That is your constant food source. So your tomato plant's going to be really benefiting off of that. The squash is at the end of the season. I don't know if it's going to make a comeback or not. It's kind of a wonky. Goes one direction and then it broke off. Something happened to it. Now it sent out another one C. So I'll decide what I'm going to do with that. And then these are cuttings and they are good. These are hibiscus cuttings. Some of them I'm not sure. See this one mean, oh no, it's green. So we leave that alone and we make sure we keep this well watered. I'm just doing some hibiscus cuttings to plant around the garden. And that's basically it. So just wanted to say good morning. So you know, this has got a lot of insects. I would not eat that up here. And the little hoverfly is trying to get to it. He goes, hey, he actually will eat the insects. They not only take the nectar, they'll eat the little tiny insects they can eat too. A lot of your wasps do that too. Okay, so now I think I'm going to finish this up. And well, not finish, it's never going to get finished. And here, I'm going to try something very different. I don't know if I can save the roselle red. I saw a flower, there's a flower. I'm going to see if I can save it for the whole year. I'm not saying I can, because I don't know if I can. I've never been able to. I've never tried. Isn't that beautiful? But I'm going to build this up differently. Going to move the celery that I really don't need at all. I might move the peppers or leave the peppers. I'm thinking of putting peppers up against the wall. If I put peppers in flower pots inside the totes and lift them up against the wall, they'll have the warmth all winter. Will I get peppers all winter? I don't know, but the black cobra goes. There's the black cobra. That's the original one. Gary's got my the smallest one that took off and did really good. See, that's the one I found the little one growing in the beginning of the year in there. So I took it out among all that uh, spinach that was growing, Malabar spinach, and I moved it in the pot that's down there. And, well, it did pretty good. And I have a beautiful, beautiful plant. It looks better than this one. This one needs a good grooming. Probably do that later. And that's basically it. But I'm thinking of putting some peppers on the wall. So if I put it in a container, it doesn't have to be a really big container and sit it like I do have my potatoes. Like I have here, exactly like this. I've got a tomato plant, Malabar spinach. If I put two more there, I think I need to get some more stuff in there anyways, and lean it up on the wall, it might have enough warmth that maybe I'll get some peppers in the winter. And maybe I'll do something this year or next year with this. I still am amazed that I did really very little here and there was enough food here. And that's it. I can't think of anything else. I think I'm gonna go groom a little bit on the tomatoes. Groom a little bit of those too. I picked a whole bunch of tomatillos. I'm gonna probably wash them and freeze them because they're, they're all over the yard. So if I bring them in and I don't use them right away, I'll freeze them. Just wash them, dry them, throw them in a plastic bag and freeze them. Okay, I am going back to work now. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Have a great day, bye-bye.